I like to call this maybe the travel planning commission the order. Madam Secretary, please call the order. Mayor Gillespie. Here. Councilman Chambers. Here. Mrs. Smith. Here. Vice Chair Barton. Chief Johnson. Here. Ms. Carpenter. Here. Mr. Daniel. Here. Mr. Hayden. And Ms. Columbus. Here. Okay. We will send it via email the uh, minutes from February the 18th and the minutes from March the 11th, which was a public hearing. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve my third percent. Second approved. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor? Two power of right hand. All right. The minutes have been approved. Uh, Scott, is there any uh, many reports that we need to share with the group? Uh, those are both open meetings. Uh, however, like you mentioned, the March 11th meeting was the public hearing for the conference plan. And of course, it's on your agenda, the end of the agenda, to consider for adoption. Um, we received uh, a series of, of comments via email and, and then the chat on the uh, Soon, um, those have all been submitted. Uh, and we can talk about when we kind of get to the planning, like uh, Miss Finnegan kind of updated some of her comments there, there, and there. And then we, we kind of went through some of the questions that were posed and present some uh, answers for those. But we can talk about those. Thank you. My name is the plan for uh, item number one has been removed or. Uh, it has been withdrawn. Do we need to take any action on that? No, sir. The uh, the applicant sent us an email that said withdrawal. So, uh, you know, it was on the bridge. Well, it had been actually postponed or continued a couple of times. So, it left on the agenda, of course, just so you can see what happened to it. It just disappeared. But it, you don't need to take any action on it. Okay. Let's go on the, the, um, <clears throat> the one at uh, this court. Which is 202 District Court, Pine Creek Apartments. Let's hear from the city on this particular item. Hello, my name is Tommy Williams, I'm the planning department. The petition is requesting that we zone the property located at 202 District Court. The current zoning is based in terms of business, and they are requesting that we zone to the park where we are not there. The parcel size is 5.5 more acres. Work is south of the parcel, same as that with the district. On March 9th, 1999, the I will get the for the Okay. Before we go any further, is the petitioner here that would wish to tell us anything about it? What's going on? Before we move ahead. How are you doing, sir? Well, what are we doing tonight? Well, there's a little outside of the norm for what y'all see me up here for. Um, and I wanted to kind of explain what's going on. Sure. One of my clients has multifamily projects all across the Alabama of Georgia. And every 20 years or so, they um, get into a, a funding uh, program to re rehabilitate the project before it really starts aging and looking bad. I don't know if anybody's written out there. This this big property is well maintained, but you can tell it's 20 years old. Yeah. Um, it's time to do uh, a rehabilitation on it. So what happened was my client went to get the funding for the, re the rehab project, and the lender's attorney kicked up a red flag and said, your zoning's not correct. 2018, when we all during all the conversations that, that we had about how to bring multifamily out of B2 and ultimately out of that R3 thing that we did too, that the city did. This project but lost its zoning 
and obtain a legal non conforming use. So my client goes to do a rehab project, and the attorneys really won't clear it to do a rehabilitation because the zoning is not proper. So, what I've got before you today is a request to bring this uh, project into compliance. The rehab project is um, a full rehabilitation interior and exterior. They put new roofs on it. They, I think this one's pretty much all bricks, so they don't do anything with the bricks, but they put, they redo the trim, they repave parking lots, fix cracks, sidewalks, re landscape. They pretty much gut every unit um, and, you know, make this project essentially new again. So um, zero added units or anything like that, no new construction. You know, you might have a new gazebo go in or something like that, but no, no additional. It's just trying to clean up the, the zoning. And then the senior living. It is. This is a senior living project, and and the way these, these funding sources work, this is a senior living project. It will remain a senior living project and in perpetuity, essentially. And I've been my favorite before this one. At the time, it was about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. but it was nice that I'm sure it will be in. Uh, and then we want to be happy to answer your other questions. Yes, go ahead. Basically, what you're saying is, does this swing by the love? Make sure you've got good track. Please feel good clients. I don't see what you want to do. So exactly. it's not. Thank you. I appreciate it. This is a public hearing. The public can come on down and ask me any question. I will find the answer if I don't know it myself. So uh, it is a public hearing. Come on down and let's talk. Okay, uh, Claude, uh, would you mind reading that in for us? Resolution and zoning request from these two to our four concrete departments, LCD, Sitchner. March 18, 2021, whereas the Pine Department LCD has submitted a request to rezone the property described in attachment A, and whereas the subject property is located inside the city limits at 02 Nisbet Court, and whereas the petitioner wishes to rezone the property from B2 General Business to R4 uh, Family, and whereas a public hearing on the proposed rezoning was held by the Private Planning Commission on March 18th, 2021. Now, therefore, will be resolved that the City of Private Planning Commission hereby recommends the rezoning of said property from B2 to R4. So, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Second. Second. Thank you. Is there any discussion, questions, comments? Yes. Yes. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to ask for a question. I have done some research. I haven't been back in the area multiple uh, times. and. Uh, I think it's a great program that you guys have. Uh, uh, look forward to working with uh, your group uh, and with some other projects in the very near future. But because of current events and the fact that the council has a more affordable apartments, uh, and again, I would say I'm not opposing this, but I will not be supporting it. I would be abstaining. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, I would have to follow along being on the city council. I'll have to abstain from this point if you will, but I am hope that it does work out. Okay. Well, do we have enough folks to join in or those that require? You can see majority because it's a right. recognition. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll call the question unless there's any other stuff. All in favor, signify by your right hand. All opposed, like sign. The recommendation is that it Thank you. be approved. Thank you, sir. You know, we have a council. All right, let's go on to the next item. This is new business. Uh, R2 to B2 is um, uh, 987. Please make three. This will put in a gentleman as the commissioner. Uh, and we, let me try to put this down. Uh, go ahead and have a score on this now. An applicant is requesting that zoning reclassification from part two, same amendment. The applicant would like to rezone one part to locate the United States, right? The B2 general business. The zone is a B2 business in the character of the surrounding area. And B2 is too intense. You can also work with the other way to make a whole lot of people. I wanted to offer this to be one for the child. And if you can see what's going on now, the B2 uh, Red station, the old one is the black station. 
Okay, now B2 would be a little more broad, or the next door is uh, the church office, and then next to it is what is B2 is the general commercial business, so we can have gas stations, so it's more, you know, more open to more like highway commercial. Okay. And so uh, the other one, the one, the one is open shop, and the other one is So it can kind of get better than the other one. That's what's going to happen. 
And I just want to make my concerns voice. I understand. I, and I believe our, our influence that we're tear it down or whatever happens once we change it. Yeah, yeah, that just that really frightens me for the amount of traffic that's right there, and it's and it's just getting worse. And so if it's a strip mall, there'll be a lot more businesses, and that means a lot more traffic turning left and left out of it. And that's of course where the accidents happen. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, part of the public here? Resolutions I would request from R2 to B2 with Mary Jones petitioners March 18, 2021. Whereas for Mary Jones have submitted a request to rezone the property described in attachment A. Whereas the subject property is located outside the city limits at 987 East Main Street, and whereas the petitioner wishes to rezone the property from R2 single family residential to B2 general business, and whereas the public hearing on the proposed rezoning was held by the Planning Commission on March 18, 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved the City of Fountain Planning Commission hereby recommends the rezoning of said property from R2 to B2. That's a good Thank you. All right, let's discuss. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm glad. You know, it's good to see that the neighbors are okay. I didn't see the projection right. of the thing. I, I'm of the opinion that if we do resume, I would rather see it at 01 because I feel like that fits more with the surrounding, even though due to the drugstore and it's on the corner, but the other things are more. Office. Oh, and I yeah. think that would fit. Because the yeah. B2 goes open to everything. Yeah. And I think we have a lot of B2 available in practice. Um, yes, sir. Uh, I'm just looking at the property size list in this. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, um, it would be extremely hard to put a script center again on that size of property. So we would set that if you have to put it in there. It would be almost impossible uh, to put a, some type of a group center situation. Uh, B2 would be fine, but like, if you're going to be, it's going to be restricted by what can be built there. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, because of the size of the lot that's there. So uh, I'm good with that. Over one would be fine too, but I don't think that's the restriction for being able to what you're going to be able to build there. Uh, or if you tear it down and build something or something like that, that's going to put a restriction for what can't go there. Just from the size of the lot size. Back to the picture of the house itself. Can you put that back up? Mr. Mayor, basically the blue line is that the um, by the way, that's where her fence is, isn't it? Yeah, or is that basically where the fence is or where the runway is, or like we were where you we kind of took in from the runway? But plus or minus the blue line is the property line. So uh, the, the driveway is over with Spencer. Uh, that's outside the blue line will be the right of way. There's a small amount right there on Main Street just between the curve and the blue line. So, probably enough to maybe get the sidewalk in that much more. We had two minutes ago. Um, what John Lee was asking about uh, this thing and uh, uh, putting in a turn lane, I don't see much real estate that would, would be available um, for us in the future, hopefully. Can buy buy people twenty yards. That's something. Uh, well, I think that there, there might be another wiggle room in there to possibly get uh, what some people have uh, named a suicide lane, a little turning lane, and could uh, that you see on the south side. And those those lines have a lot of plus and minuses. Uh, you can't uh, um, you can't really go to the bank with these with these lines. And they're they're close, but. Uh, that could mean quite a bit one way or another. So there is, I think there might be a possibility to get time to get some type of turn lane. And again, I, I see no issues with us changing it. Um, do we have any other discussion on what we would change it to? Certainly, if they have somebody coming before us, yes, sir. 
I'm coming in. Um, yeah. The rule of thumb for um, retail development like this might potentially be is about 10,000 feet per acre by the time you take into consideration parking and um, so forth. So this, this could support maybe 5,000 feet. So we're talking about a small building. Mm -hmm. I, I think to follow up with, with what the mom said. So, you know, the concept of a strip mall really isn't a practical. It would be a redeveloped uh, into uh, maybe one or two shops. Yeah. Um, I don't know what particularly my foundation would have seen these two, how we can make it. One and she always, the person always, if they have a project, they got something. We would be entertained a change from O1 to B2 at the time. If you came to a, a, a big person, someone who came to us with something, and we needed to change it, we could change it at that time. We could make it O1, B2, and B2. Is there anything else? This is just sock a lot this size. Gas station. A gas station fit on that lot. Not realistically, I don't really know the party, but by example, you got to have a change from the progression. There's no way you can do it. I don't have my car. They barely do it. Like I said, find out where it was in the house. And then you got, I don't know how, how much right away is with the power lines and married lines from the front of it. I don't know if you can do, do the tank. Yeah. I think a difficult task of bigger tanks in front of that. I don't know. I don't think you can see that thing. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and then I think on top of that, you, you can see a lot less green space there, a lot more asphalt. So that means they're going to have a uh, retention area for their, for their runoff water. But, um, and Ms. Carpenter uh, helped me out. I think sometime back there's some kind of uh, maybe unwritten agreement that uh, uh, Spencer is going to be some kind of borderline for our business area in there. But you know, I, I guess I am still a firm believer that I need to show a good product. If you have something that is that can potentially impact the neighborhood there, mm -hmm. this neighborhood is is already been impacted because of a lot of the green zoning, uh, green B. Or uh, office of uh, only on that one. So I would really like to see a, a good game plan because if this is rezoned, I would bet um, some of these other lots are up and down over there could also be purchased. And then that's when you can see something that could truly uh, uh, impact this area. And it is a very busy area. So right now, <clears throat> unless I have, and, and I will certainly respect. Uh, a property owner will be able to, to capitalize in any shape or fashion that they can, but it is going to uh, impact the, the, the long standing locals in that area. And uh, so, my sense right now is I'm, I'm just not seeing support in the thing unless it's a true type of shovel ready project. I mean, we can almost take the thing. All right, Let me ask a question. Yes. If we were to, in the spirit of the kind of compromise on the two, if we amended this to 01, then it would make it impossible for somebody to buy both lots and create a strip mall. It would be fine, in my opinion, as an office space which was once residential, now office. So would you be more in support if, if we amended it to L1 so that somebody couldn't buy it and then turn us to put a strip mall in there per se? Because they would have to come back before for zoning to do that. But we would at least give him the business zoning for what it sounds like they're trying to do. Would that be a, a little more palatable for you? It would be, and certainly I would put the paper on it. If, if the, uh, if the, 
and the petitioner is okay with that, and I'll make a recommendation or amendment to the zone for business so one. Just a question. Yes. Why you come on by the mic if you would? Um, but there's some time we're being recorded and there's people that might be listening on, on YouTube at some point, so they won't be able to hear you. Just, just a question. Um, why would this property be different from all the rest of their zone red? You know, have a little trouble trying to make that leap. Why? And that old block all the way to Memorial Drive, everything is red. Why is this one O2 or O1 or whatever it is? I, I agree with you. I'm not I'm not against it being O2. I just was wondering if in order to find it be in a slightly different zoning, it may make some of the commissioners feel more comfortable so that somebody couldn't come in or would not come in and buy a whole block and then put something like a strip mall in there, you know, buy multiple pieces right. of property without that shovel ready project coming back before us to see what, what it is they wanted to do. So it would be okay for them to buy all the way from Memorial Drive all the way to 987 to put a strip mall. It, it, absolutely. Right. Yes, sir. And, and, and again, I'm not against B2, I'm just, Trying to strike a little bit of a compromise with some concepts here to, to, to help you get what you're wanting to accomplish. I'm just having trouble from here to here is red. Somebody could buy that and put it in a strip yes. center, but yeah. they'd have to stop here because that one's not eligible. Correct. I'm not against me, too. Like I said, I just thought I'd throw it out. If it's next to it over here, yeah. but it didn't come back and be rezoned to be too. So I got to and me for my mom. I'm just trying to get the most flexibility I give her. Right. So, you know, oh, one time if somebody came in and gave a good price, she doesn't care. She doesn't have the money to pay. I think O1 would be more of a thing that could be being ready to be approved. I'm afraid B2 would be something that you would have to come back with a shovel ready project and, and we would look at. Um, but I want to go ahead and start. The reason I said O1 would be more powerful to me is because the, uh, the businesses around there, even though they are zone B2, are being used in an O1. Uh, capacity. So, right. So right. that fits okay. with the use that is okay. currently being used. That's because you could, somebody could buy your lot and the lot next to it and put a fast food or something, and then there's real traffic and yeah. gas station. You know what? It conforms with what is being, it's being used as, okay. not necessarily. If, if it goes to the one oh, one, if it goes to oh, one would somebody be able to come in, knock down the existing house, make it bigger? Does it have to be a single unit or does it, it be the two side by side this one would be approved? It, it, would have to, it, would, it would have to go through the plan review process for the city, looking at setbacks, what type of structure, the, the fire marshal's office reviews it, building, planning, zoning, all that you know is looked at. So if they were going to tear it down and come back with something different, it has to go through a process. Because I thought all along somebody would probably knock it down because there's so much glass on that line. They might be big enough to support, like you said, a gas station there. That's a lot of grass to have to maintain if you're a business, you know, just to use that existing building. So that's why I thought they might make it bigger. I mean, you've got the setback rules and that kind of stuff. And you could, you could go with a bigger structure there. Still would get in the Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you how much bigger. But yeah, okay. you can go bigger than that. And again, it depends on the occupancy classification because parking becomes an issue. You know, assembly versus a business office or storage versus mercantile, there's right. different parking requirements. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, just so you, I cannot speak for anybody up here but myself, one of the challenges that I see with this going to be too, besides the other ones you had brought up, is the fact that you can potentially impact the neighborhood a lot more because of Spencer, and I believe Spencer, isn't it? They were on the other side. 
So that means people could be coming in from there and bring more traffic into the neighborhood. Which now one thing that I probably don't know enough about the school water bridge is I probably need to know, but I know that when you have a business and you start taking place in that green area, you go with the asphalt, you got to have a retention area. I also will say that all of this is going to be that same category. So if somebody does come in there and start doing that, they might have to go through a school water procedure, I believe, which will cause them to have a retention fine area or something along that line. But to me, this lot has a lot more potential to impact the neighborhood in a negative way than the immediate lot to its west, because the lot to the west has to come in from Main Street. Right. So that's that's my thought. Our, one of our roles up here is to help try to protect the neighborhood integrity and uh, basically the culture. Um, and think, uh, I think there have been some um, compromises in the past to where it was recognized Spencer as some of that dividing line, even though the offices have popped up there. But again, this can be more impacted than some other lines up there. All right. Well, thank you, sir. So uh, we will go forward. All right. Is there a um, motion to approve the round one? Or was that word? You already made the motion. I, I haven't yet, but I mean, uh, through the idea out there. Uh, you're okay with number one. Have to do that way, I guess I am. Well, I, I'm thinking that's going to be your best chance of success in what you're trying to do, to be honest with you. So that's, that's why I suggested that. I, I mean, I make a recommendation for amendment uh, from uh, what was proposed as B2 to O1. Uh, there's a motion to change the recommendation from B2 to O1. Uh, they're now going to vote on the motion. All in favor, signify by raising your right hand for the motion. Okay. Now, um, on the uh, motion, the entire motion altogether, uh, is there any more discussion on that? Do I need to read it back in, Mr. Scott? Or with the correction? Yeah, or maybe we're resetting the, the motion to start the motion. Okay. With the, the mayor was just to speak, and I would never stop the mayor. Yes, sir. Well, again, I do uh, appreciate Dallas Johnson coming with the compromise here, and I did support uh, moving forward with this one. But again, since there is no shovel grade plan on this one, I will not be supporting it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. And can Mr. Dallas, can you read it in with the, or with the, um, the, 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 the other one? Sure. I think you can just say uh, recommend to rezoning said property to the board. Did I believe saying you want to read in the amendment to the vote on? All of the vote on. We just read it again and then what's the correct procedure? I, 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 just, I would make sure that everyone is aware of what the, the standing of the motion on the table is. Um, I believe it's to rezone from R2 to R2. That's what we're going to do right now. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, fight time. Okay. It appears that we'll go before the city council to recommend the government that they want. Thank you, sir. Now, the next thing is Glen Brook. It's Rise. Or not Brook Park. Go ahead and see. Let's go. I'll start us off here. Go ahead and see. So, what's before us today? This is for uh, basically Glen Brook 8. Um, from the annexation um, and extension of Glenbrook 8. So see this graph here, it's approximately 6.14 acres um, and the proposal is to annex this into the city. 
it, 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 so once developers started working with the land and looking at the plat and options, um, it turned out they needed this stormwater, um, this pond right now for stormwater and to move forward with their this next phase. Um, so they're wanting to annex this in currently. Right after this, we'll be rezoning it, assuming it gets annexed um, or recommended for annexation. We'll go forward with the uh, rezoning proposal as well. Um, this particular lot is just going to be one lot. It's not going to be any kind of resident, any housing on it. Um, it's just for that pond right there. You can see. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Ryan, you like that? I'll be happy to answer any questions. This one, uh, this one strictly be fixing up, mess up by my guys. Okay. Um, this should have been included in the first annexation that that line's needed for stormwater management. Okay, and just so we know what we're making, and it's going to be a sustainable pond and um, we'll bring it in the end. We have to go on R3 or R2 or question. Question. Um, need that if we do road maintenance in the city, who's going to maintain that? Because most city retention ponds, most times are out of be maintained by the city. So is Stone Mark going to maintain this? Yes, that process has changed uh, significantly in the last two years. Um, there's now a completely new post construction stormwater management. Process the city of Franklin utilizes. Um, we've got to put money into escrow long term for in case our HOA was to go bankrupt or something like that. So this is this will be an HOA maintained facility. Um, it would also be worth noting that I was requesting that the annexation um, be actually, I mean, the, the zoning be brought it be done as a pre zoning. Um, so for some reason. We always do the so. but then we are requesting our approval with this just to stay in compliance with the rest of the subdivision. Mm -hmm. Is there, uh, this is a public hearing, the public is encouraged to come on down and speak to us. Uh, please ask me any question you want, I'll get the answer. And the public hearing, public hearing. Yes, sir. Uh, whereas David and L. Avans, Diane Harvey have submitted their request to annex the property as described in attachment A and shown in attachment B. And whereas the subject property is located outside of the city limits south of Old Ridge Road West of Cliff Road 8. And whereas the petitioner wishes to annex the approximately 6.14 acre property into the corporate limits of the city of Prattle. Whereas a public hearing on the proposed annexation was held by the Practical Planning Commission on March 18, 2021. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the City of Practical Planning Commission hereby recommends the annexation of said property into the City of Practical Corporate Limits. All right. So, second. Sorry. Thank you. Discussion. Any discussion? Any questions? Uh, I'll call the vote. I'll call the vote. All in favor, right in. All opposed, right sign. It looks like that one was moved. All right, we're going to go on to the next one. Right in front. And we have uh, this base is the exact same property. Now that it is being recommended for annexation, um, <coughs> there is a request to to rezone or to zone this property from unincorporated no zoning to R3. Uh, this is consistent with the rest of Glen Road there. Um, this section, again, this is really uh, should have been part of Glen Road 8, the annexation and zoning then, um, but it wasn't. So now I want to pull it in and zone it. Okay. And zone will be on the road. Yes, sir. They went on the road, so that's an order. Uh, this is a public hearing. 
Zoning request to R3 Glen Book A extension dated out Abe and R A Petitioners Project Travis David L A and Diane R A has submitted a request to zone the property as described in attachment A and shown in attachment B. And where is the subject property is located outside of the city limits, south of Old Ridge Road, west of Glen Book A. And where is the petitioner wishes to zone the approximately 6.14 acre property to R3? Single family residential. And where is a public hearing on proposed zoning was held by the Practical Planning Commission on March 18, 2021? And I therefore be resolved that the City Practical Planning Commission hereby recommend the zoning of said property to R3, single family residential. So, All right, thank you. All right, discussion. That's one more question. I know you're all three, but I can't go out and talk about that. That's about it. City okay with some of our grid of it with neighborhood and flat. I'm serious about it. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. All the questions. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so now we're getting into fun stuff. Um, so this is the preliminary plat for Glen Road 8, including the portion that we just discussed and the remainder of the uh, about 64 acres that was already there that was annexed and uh, zoned several months ago. Um, this is total approximately 69 acres. The is R3 zoning and the applicant is proposing to develop 92 lots with this configuration you see here on the screen. Um, basically, there, there's multiple street connections. Uh, Charleston and Tullahoma continue from the south, they continue to go north, um, and ultimately it connects to uh, Maggie. Couple other streets that would get it out to connecting to Limerick 7 and ultimately get out to Old Ridge Road. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you've got. Move the vehicle on that to exit to Old Ridge or is that Old Ridge? Or is that on this particular line, there are no exits. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it does connect in. To Glenbrook Seven, which has the, the connection to Old Ridge Road, and it has the connections to the South, which is also part of Glenbrook Seven. Um, the two connections there that the road continues to go on. Be happy to answer any questions. This is uh, in concord, concurrence with the current master plan. And, um, we did receive uh, a few staff comments that looked at when I had any issue complying with the MTO. So that would be used from our end. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. There along. What are the other connections? Yeah. If I chime in, you can also from from this connection on Tullahoma Drive, you can actually work your way all the way back to Fairview. So I mean, to connect from a connect, connectivity standpoint, there are absolutely lines with the appendix of the IFC. Yeah. But right there where we bridge and all that area up there, is that where it does not connect? Uh, That's on the other side. I don't know what, what, what the little blue line the road is right there. Is that not on the whole bridge? If, if I could, yes. if you look at the very top center 
right there, Scott. Just you see that road? That is that right there is Old Ridge, and that is the new connection right there into Old Ridge that was done in phase seven. You just can't see phase seven, but all of these connections that we're showing to the east, they connect into phase seven, which has a single road that runs all the way to Old Ridge. Okay. That's not good. All right, I got a question. I know I can't see the whole plan, you know. Yes, I know we brought this up with other developers recently. Where is the public space, the All right. green space? <laughs> so, all these? you know, as we've we've talked about a few times, um, Glenbrook is a is a is a pretty special, good. special place. So we don't we don't put dedicated like hardscape amenities in every single phase. Uh, what we have here is a big pond, and all of this property to the north of that pond is all open space in, in perpetuity. Um, so nothing will be. So that is that will stay. Just yes, like that's how future is built. That's what. That's what um, we do envision the next phase after this is our next phase that is scheduled to get the next hard scale. That's, that's what yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. That's right. Uh, thank you. Well, since you brought up about the great uh, the wooded area there, how are the citizens supposed to get to it, or is that going to be off limits? No. Um, what we'll what we'll do is we've got the pond itself. Um, when you get see the road that is stubbing out yeah. right there, so that right there is stubbing out directly into the current pond dam. And once the next phase goes, that road, that dam will have to be rebuilt. And you'll have another road that is wrapping all the way across the um, dam and connecting eventually. We'll have a third connection out to Old Ridge Road. Um, and when you get that, we're going to have a mini, like a hardscape amenity site on the other side of the pond. And at that point, you'll have. Uh, direct access from that hard state maybe all into this um, wooded area right there. And yes, you tell me a little bit more about the hard escape I mean, <laughs> When I say hard escape, um, Glenbrook has many, many I mean, miles of, of open area. Um, some of it is some of it's used as walking trails. Some of it's some of it's topographically. Um, it's just rough property, but it's green space and. So we have a lot of it, but then we also have what we call hardscape amenities. Um, and there's two pools in um, Glenbrook. There's a splash pad and big pavilion. There's another big open, actual dedicated um, park with backstop and soccer goals and things like that. That's really when I say hardscape amenity, I mean something that's actually um, developed specifically for recreational purposes. If, uh, man, I think I think what some of the commissioners were wanting is that concept that you have uh, on the other side of Tullahoma where you've got the splash pad and the mm -hmm. playground. That's probably what they're wanting to see. Mm -hmm. Thanks to that. That's what I was saying. The next that when we cross that dam, that would be phase nine. Right. Phase nine is scheduled to get the next big something on the on the other side of the pond mm -hmm. to utilize the pond and all of this as additional community. Yeah. And I don't know, and I don't want to know right now, but I hope y'all are looking at different lot layouts too, like yes, sizes and things. You know, the what we've seen with Glenbro, um the what you've seen in the last two phases have been really all of the higher price points. Of, of everything that's in Glenbrook. Um, when, we, when we originally started Glenbrook, for those of you that were on the commission then, there were three different product lines in Glenbrook. One of them, we found out 10 years ago, was not really well received in practice. We haven't done it since. And that was those rear alley um, homes that are in phase one. But then after that, there were, we, we opened up a different <coughs> Product line. So we kept three going for a while. And really, what over the past few years, what we've seen that Bloomberg really desires is the, the 
pinnacle of the price point. Um, and that's the reason that you've seen now the Rigid Craft Farms and McLean Landing on the south side of town, because Glenbrook has become a subdivision that really commands just those larger lots and, and higher price points than anything else. I think you discussed it before, the is a great thing that it's not have enough right. public space. It does not. Um, and like like I've said before, I mean the first I just want to make that. sure we don't do that. Well if you if you've driven by McLean Landing and seen that big monster of uh, amenity that's going in at the very front there, that, that was our solution to that problem. <laughs> All right. All right. You have a question from Sister. Hopefully I don't I'm sorry, I'm so forgetting. So we have that here on the other one. We have a resident yet? Uh, neither. Neither. Don't go over here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. We made it sure to pop up with me. Just like this, keep them in. All right. Uh, public hearing, public can come on down here and talk to us. If anybody has any questions, come on down and I'll get back to you. The public hearing is closed. Mr. Daniel, can you read that one before we go to the hearing? Resolution plan number five, Lindbergh Subdivision Plan 8, March 18, 2021, whereas SMB Land LLC is the developer of the property presented as Lindbergh Subdivision Plan 8, and whereas the proposed development is located south side of Old Ridge Road, west of East Memorial Baptist Church, and whereas a revised sketch plan of the Glenbrook Subdivision Master Plan was approved in September 19, 2019. Whereas public hearing on the proposed preliminary flat was heard on March 18, 2021. And whereas the required city departments have reviewed and commented on the proposed preliminary flat. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the City of Prattville Planning Commission hereby gives its favorable review of the submitted preliminary plan of Glenbrook Subdivision Plan 8. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Discussion? Question? I will call the question. All in favor? I'm going to write here. I am. All those like sign. Here we go. Thank you. All right. Um, we are moving on the to number seven, which is an R4. All my family to B2 on lot A and lot B. The reserve three plot of lot A to five point down center, lot two A. Uh, yes, sir. This is a piece of property that has been discussed previously in the recent history by the Planning Commission. Uh, I'll give a quick history of the, the overall property, so the, the larger property as well as the two mile parcels. Uh, in 2006, the, it was rezoned from FA R to B2. In the summer of 19, spring and summer of 19, a developer approached the Planning Commission with uh, plans of a multifamily apartment development. Uh, the council, or the commission recommended, and the council decided to rezone it from D2 to R4, and that was the, the entire parcel. So, that brown color is the R4. Uh, in February 18, 2021, the city uh, approached the planning commission about rezoning it back from R4 back to B2. Uh, that recommendation, actually, the motion failed at the planning commission. It still gets sent to the council right now. It's not uh, it's not been sponsored to the council currently, but it's still kind of uh, out there in a holding pattern. Uh, today, the owner BBCD uh, High Point LLC is requesting to rezone these two out parcels, lot A and lot B, back to the to general business general. Okay. Um, is a petitioner here that wishes to speak? He is. He's on Zoom. Give me a second to. I was on that note. There's a will there. Oh, well, the wheel's there too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there. Tell us who you are and what's going on 
I'm Will Barrett, uh, designated agent from UBC. Top Point. Lights got this. This has been brought up before. The owners of the property on this top point. Town Center, lot 2A, lot 8A, A, A, B, which to rezone that from lot 4 to B2. Smith, um, 31 and 82. 
And then there's one more on the uh, southern side, a little closer um, on 31 there next to the Liberty gas station. Um, this, this is really kind of an alteration of a previously approved master plan or sketch plan. Um, back a couple of years ago, an overall sketch plan. Um, an overall sketch plan of all of the McLean property, basically, or what's currently McLean, um, going all the way up to Center Point Church property. Uh, that whole large multi parcel. Uh, many an acre property was approved in the sketch plan. Uh, this altered that slightly. This was previously approved uh, in that previous sketch plan as residential. Uh, similar number of, of uh, residences and uh, just a little bit of alteration in connections and, and road layout. But overall, it's not so far different from what was previously approved. Um, and ultimately, this is an extension of McLean Landing, which is across the Queensland Road. Uh, do you have any answer any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, I know we looked at, looked at this back over this past year, uh, and I still don't bring up the concern that I have is, is Queen Smith, me and it's going to be wide because it's going to have, I'd rather have Queen Smith Road every day. And the traffic trying to get all of 31 on Queen Smith uh, is just horrendous. And some days on 31, depending on what time of day it is, I just a little bit concerned if they don't put some kind of traffic light system in a wide Queen Smith, it's going to be a horrendous amount of traffic. It's going to put far up Queen Smith and 31 people in the That's my concern. I'm just very and I can answer that. I don't know if Mayor Dan or Scott knows currently what the staff does, of course, the city engineer and several. But um, one thing to address that, and this was a staff comment, and they've altered the plan for this, uh, was that connection here that's in the, um, it's really in the south, at the southern side there, connecting the 31 um, south, a little bit of the gas station and uh, north of. Of that um, rental equipment rental place. Um, you can see there that is connection to 31. We call order order on the cell. It does take you to the end of the order on the cell. Um, so it's like adding a number in there. Sketch plan is Smith property phase two, March 18, 2021, whereas HD and D land company has um, presented a sketch plan for Smith property phase two. Consideration by the planning commission and whereas both development is located inside the center of Lucas Highway 82 East and complete Smith Road and Highway 31, and whereas the seat farm has and was viewed commented on the proposed sketch plan. Now, therefore, be resolved that the city capital planning commission hereby gives its favorable review of the submitted sketch plan for Smith property phase two. I'll say, thank you, sir. We're going to go on. And so, one item to back the packet, back to that report is that uh, previously could have kept one out of the And just so uh, we know. And this one was from uh, I was last updated in 2019. Okay. So, what is the city's? <laughs> on the back side of one of the things, mm -hmm. the back side of the road. Yeah. 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 Yes, sir. Like I think I said, how's the living? So I would be able to have to be a short term for the future. But I am certain that that's a lot of traffic on the back of the Queen Smith at that intersection with Queen Smith. 31 is horrible. I think you're going to put the 131, but uh, it's going to be still up there along the Queen Smith. I did this just as a certain direction. Okay. Um, it is a concern. Mr. Mayor, I think. 
what's our future on mining or alleviating us in terms of things I think it's right. But again, it has quite a few different uh, uh, variables with it as well. One of it, uh, at the end of the day, it all takes funding. Uh, just recently, I heard that uh, the Queen Smith Road, Queen Smith Road Lightning is going to be about an $18 million dollar, uh, project. But uh, we do have some thoughts and ideas that uh, I don't want to get the car for the course, but uh, it involves the community, the council action, and uh, and also potentially some uh, monies we have received uh, from the federal government, but uh, we have not received the 13 million that I had talked about. I don't remember, I think I had talked about it here, but I know I had it in the city council meeting. Uh, I have some others, some sitting here in the room, taking some trips to DC trying to acquire $13 million. Uh, we don't, we're still working on that, but we have some other options as well. Uh, I really feel confident in saying that there will be some good movement on this in somewhat of the near future. That's going to be the best knowledge I'm giving to that. But uh, since I do have the microphone, if I might, um, uh, I'm thinking right here in one little, I don't even know what shape this is, closest to road. I think it does say detention. Spread it is so small. The model I I really did read it, but uh, uh, I'd like for somebody to discuss more with me about that because that was we did talk about this plan before. I think the stance of the planning commission, in my opinion, has got a stiffer, tougher about green spacing. And um, you'll be talking about what is green spacing. But the other question I'm going to have exactly how wide are the two streets right here apart? And you know, that's definitely, if this corner lot gets developed, what is, what is our, what's the game plan about the egress with that lot as well? Encourage them to this. So uh, you might be able to that to public staff here again. Thank you. Uh, I'll answer the, are you asking about this portion here? Yes. It, it, it is on the commercial, B2 commercial. That's the Macedonia Church, which kind of actually wraps around it. Uh, we, we have been asked about it, uh, and of course, the uh, city engineer is, is thoroughly involved when it comes to any kind of access questions. Uh, and it just depends on the um, what may be submitted and, and the type of use. Uh, if it's very low volume, and I don't want to speak for Robbie, but for Mr. Anderson, but, but he, he may consider something out of the but I imagine, I'm pouring it doesn't work anymore, I imagine he would prefer it to come out on that, that entrance road to the Denver. Yes, and that was going to be my question. And I'm not being able to, to say it any better than I can. So uh, that road will be turned over to the city for a potential exception for maintenance. So that will be the option. I, I've not seen a break in that guy before seen property where the land might go about like three feet and leave it in their control. That way, can stop some of that without uh, them taking financial advantage of it. So I just want to make certain that. That's, you know, I don't have anything to do with you, but I just, I'm not seeing where an opportunity lies there. Uh, right. I, I'm not seeing anybody trying to do like a little, little strip to kind of protect that. Um, I will point out that Poe's interests both line up with the existing um, claim land interests. But of course, uh, all the departments and city engineer in particular, when it comes to traffic, uh, he just simply would not, would not allow some of that access at an unsafe. But, but uh, yes, now that you mentioned that, we'll, we'll certainly might we'll make sure that we're going to try to carve that out. That would be a subdivision anyway. And, uh, and if I may, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you'll notice later, that, that master plan um, is not, um, there's a reason that there's not four lots across the street right there. Those, those lots are left out because it's good plan. Um, access to that to that commercial spot. If we had not, if we had just put four more lots on the other side, we would have done the whole area an injustice by forcing a situation where they would have to access directly on the Queen Smith. That's the reasoning behind not having those lots there. So there's access directly to uh, both road. 
right away this happened with Smith. Um, so I, I mean, I, I understand um, the concern, but that was the, that was the thought process behind that at the very beginning. Um, AD two is you know not accessible. That's denied access. Uh, I would, if the church wasn't there, I would imagine all the way through the western edge or the southern edge of the church property would probably be denied access from uh, from the, in the in Pratt engineer's office simply because of you know, location uh, adjacent to that and next intersection. The the two uh, roadway connections. Um, you were, I think you were asking about the distance between them. I imagine it's for fire code. Reasoning, um, if you'll notice, there is a there's a third connection up there on to on the 31. Um, the only reason that this mixed plan is before you today is if I had brought this in in this current configuration, it probably would have not come back because it's essentially the same sketch plan that was already approved. The reason we brought it in today is because I assume incorrectly that. After rethinking it, the city might, the city might not want that connection of 31. So I actually submitted this without that connection, sat down with Mr. Stevens, and we realized that if we're going to remove that connection, I need to bring this back in to get it redone. Once it was submitted, reviewed by staff, um, both Chief Johnson's office and the engineering said, no, we, we do want that connection. So we put it back in. So it's here before you today, essentially in its exact configuration that it was originally. Um, so that we we are definitely within fire code now with that connection, um, no question. So that, that's really the impetus behind it. If you would put the, if you could count that master plan is probably too small to see the chart, but I believe originally there's like uh, 95 lots or something like that scheduled for this area. What we've done is we've got bigger lots now, so we just got less trouble. We're using the exact same roadway um, layout, we just have less lots. One more question. Uh, that's part of our plan is that uh, this is still our connection over to McLean Lane. That's still all the same HOA. Does this group have uh, ability to go to? Amenities you have over there? I can't 100% answer that question. I actually noticed. So, somehow, lots, I believe, I've got a note written there. Apparently, lots, I think it says 45 and 46. Anyway, as you turn in next to the adjacent, I mean, next to the commercial property, the first few lots on the right. Um, so, if you, you show, yes, those two lots right there. Those lots were scheduled to actually be an amenity. Um, and I'd like it on the record that that's our purpose for those two lots. I, somehow, in us trying to get this turned back around quickly and put that uh, roadway connection back in, if you would look on the one that we originally submitted, that's that amenity right there. I don't know how that, and I missed it. No, I'm like, <laughs> that's on me. But those were scheduled, that scheduled to be another meeting site right there. And that's the reason that we kind of cut it out because whatever happens commercially right there at that corner, I didn't want it backing up straight to those lots. So we utilized those two lots as a meeting site. We're, we're toying with the idea of allowing shared meetings across. McQueen Smith, but at the same time, it's it, we we need to we need to study a little further and see how it would work. Because one fear that I have is, uh, you know, ten o'clock on a Saturday morning, a, a, a mom and two kids in this subdivision decide we if we put a splash pad on this side, a mom and two kids decide they want to go to the pool, and they decide to take a golf cart over there. I'm a little concerned about them crossing McQueen Smith, so we're we're looking at that. If if we do, it would have to there would have to be some serious rules put in place um, about how that could how that could happen. Well, thank you. That was something I'm concerned as well because I feel the quickness for a little bit 
light on the front of canopy, even though uh, I guess my final one is what about sidewalks uh, right here on the police bed side over there? There's some of these sidewalks, I think, on the police bed road, like the plan, maybe the house, but they are getting sidewalks planned. We have any sidewalks planned on the police bed simply because we are we knew it was in the widening, in the whole widening plan. So we, we've been working with engineering now for two years, making sure that these developments comply with what the um, construction drawings show for the widening. I mean, we have put a, put a sidewalk there, you know, if it's needed. Uh, I, I kind of like to keep people off of McLean Smith as long as possible, you know, pedestrian wise. Um, but if, if the city desired, we could certainly parallel the police bin with a sidewalk. It's not a good deal. Okay. Would you be open to us approving this with the uh, putting the city lot right there as many lots? I would prefer that you do. I was going to make that request. Uh, I would have made a motion to that be added. <laughs> I move mean, that we do the two lots carved out next to the commercial site as amenity lots. Second. All right. Now we are voting on the amendment to the uh, proposal to the sketch plan. With the understanding, if you don't mind, that remember this is a sketch plan. Absolutely. So the so stuff will move. And there will be an amendment. There will be an amendment. Yes. That means all in favor, raise your right hand on the vote. But yeah, it's it is part of the sketch plan. Um, Thank you. And now I want to just is there any more questions for him for the sketch plan? Now we come back more detail in the future. If this is a sketch plan. Uh, any more questions? Then I'm going to call a question on the amended sketch plan, which includes the two lots that are now uh, amenity lots. All in favor of the uh, resolution? Two by All opposed by the side. Okay. Here we go. Now we are getting to the last two things. And the flag takes a break. All right. Um, we have a public hearing on the ordinance and then it's R4. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so, again, our second hour. Uh, the commission may be aware that. December of 2020, the city council passed a moratorium on the multi family developments. It makes the same with no new apartments, uh, with the purpose of updating the property plan, which is, is on here in advance, as well as uh, updating the zoning. So, uh, last month's meeting, there, there was some talk about making some uh, small incremental uh, amendments to the R4 zoning. Recommendation was just to push on that. We, we've uh, met with the consultant a number of times, just to place the bucket here. And, and now we're continuing an entirely new rewrite of the R4 of the multi family zone. So I'm going to swap over. Uh, I'm going to swap over to Mr. All right, so uh, in, in your packet is, is the tech proposed text amendment. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Potter here so he can go through our examples and uh, further explanation of the proposed multi family. So, Mr. Potter, you want to go ahead and read the text? As we move through the planning process and begin working with zoning works, one of the issues, of course, was just uh, residential development, particularly multifamily. So we began putting together some recommendations uh, for staff to take a look at and 
then we had uh, shared that with uh, uh, a, a little bit larger group. So what we um, what we have done is we have prepared an amendment that would go into section 67 of the zoning ordinance, which is currently titled multifamily housing projects. Uh, and so that establishes some of the requirements that are connected to the R4 zoning. So if you wanted to do any multifamily in R4, you'd have to abide by section 67. So the uh, I'll give you a summary today of what we have um, put together, drafted. Uh, there's a set of site development standards um, that deal with um, how buildings, parking areas, open spaces are arranged on the site, uh, requirements for open space, how the stormwater is dealt with, waste collection, uh, providing storage space uh, for tenants, and of course, fire protection. Uh, quickly about arrangement and orientation, this is deals with how buildings are arranged on the site. Uh, it would, would, the recommendations would, would require that buildings are oriented either towards streets, towards the interior drives, or towards open spaces, not to be oriented towards adjacent properties and not to solely be oriented towards parking. So it has to, they have to be aligned with something other than parking or adjacent properties uh, to meet that requirement. Um, buildings cannot be surrounded completely by parking areas uh, and very rigid uh, barracks style arrangements of buildings would be prohibited. I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Um, so you can see in this, uh, this site plan of uh, uh, a, a multi-building complex, uh, several of the buildings wouldn't meet the, some of these uh, site requirements, but you'll see the the building on the lower right is completely surrounded by parking. So is the, the building immediately uh, north of that. And then on the uh, left side of the screen, you'll see another building that's uh, surrounded by parking is oriented more towards the adjacent property uh, and towards parking. And it's not really associated with any open space or anything like that. Uh, another example, uh, so another uh, site plan of a multi uh, multi building complex. It's the four buildings on the left, although they are um, they do have um, parking around them, they are oriented around a common open area. So that would meet this these these requirements. However, you see the building on the left hand side, the airport to it is surrounded by parking, uh, and so it would not meet that requirement. Uh, and an existing um, Multifamily development in a city in Alabama here. Uh, this would be very representative of that sort of rigid, rectilinear, barracks style development uh, where all the buildings are more or less the same. They have the same um, amount of open space and orientation towards uh, parking and streets. Uh, so, this would really be discouraged uh, in uh, really the, the layout of the property and the site, the, the environmental conditions, the topography, all of that uh, should be carefully considered when laying out um, any of those developments. Uh, the building spacing, uh, so the required space between buildings, whether that is going to be parking or driveways or common area, uh, is based on the size of the building. So when you have two buildings side by side, if they are oriented their long sides one toward one another. Um, you add up the length of both of those buildings and divide that by three, and that's the minimum space in your apartment. Uh, and so when you have two short sides of buildings, uh, they're you know, the ends of two multifamily buildings um, side by side, uh, you're going to end up usually with a total requirement of about 20 feet or maybe a little bit more than 20 feet. But if you start laying the long way side to side, the spacing starts to get uh, more based on the length of those buildings so that you have decent, well proportioned spaces between the buildings. Uh, parking uh, requirements are uh, going to include uh, not allowing parking between the street and the building, uh, and that if parking is located to the sides of buildings, uh, that not more than 30% of the street frontage of that complex can be devoted to parking. So you're going to have yard 
and building uh, as the predominant form on the street, not parking. Keep more of that residential character, not the sort of commercial characters, particularly as important when you have any R4 or multifamily development. This would be anywhere adjacent to single family areas. It helps to have them integrated a little bit better to not have parking up in front. So here's an example of a you know, multifamily complex that has all of their parking in front. There may be some conditions, uh, topography or other unique characteristics that would uh, make it more conducive to have parking in front. So we do we did carve out an exception that the that staff can approve uh, for exceptional circumstances to allow parking in front of those buildings, uh, particularly if they're located in the commercial area where parking is located in front, such as uh, this parking complex is on a major road uh, and most of the development around it has parking in front. So it would be appropriate for those circumstances. Uh, open space, a new requirement there, 20% of the overall site has to be devoted to open space. Half of that requirement has to be approved open space, so 10% of the site could be uh, natural uh, open area, and then the other 10% would have to be approved. Uh, and for developments larger than 40 units, uh, unless they are age restricted, such as senior housing, uh, they would be required to put in some type of improved children's play area. Uh, and that, um, so that is again at 40 units above. And the way that the open space requirements are set out, there's incentive to put porches and decks, other types of semi private space uh, attached to buildings that create that transition from the building to the common area. So there's a there's the private interior space of the building semi private space on the outside of the porch and then the more public communal space beyond that. So something uh, you know, this would be uh, an acceptable uh, open space. Uh, they can have pools, gazebos, lawn area, pickleball courts, whatever, what have you, whatever is the, uh, the amenity um, that is um, you know, appropriate to the market at the time. Uh, will fit that category so long as it is technically improved according to the, the standards. Um, and here's just an example of a, a multifamily development that has a lot of porch spaces. These don't even look like multifamily buildings because of the design. Uh, they look more like uh, townhouses or uh, just single family homes where they have a porch zone and they have a nice separation. There's, there's a sense of privacy and transition from the common area on the left right hand side of the screen to the buildings with those, those uh, porches and that, um, that vertical separation as well. Uh, stormwater management, uh, it, uh, the recommendation is to require that stormwater um, design is incorporated into the parking lots rather than all of it being uh, handled in, in the retention area. Um, there, uh, there would be an allowance in exceptional circumstances um, so there's, to the degree, practical to incorporate uh, stormwater design into parking areas. And if there are stormwater facilities, such as a retention pond included in a design, uh, it can only be counted towards the required improved open space if it is designed so that it can be used as an amenity by the rest. So if it's, if it's a, just a strictly minimal engineered retention pond with chain link fence around it, can't be counted towards the required open space. Um, yeah, here's question. Yes, sir. Would you go going back, I think, two slides? Uh, one more. Uh, okay, one more. Okay, right there. Okay. Um, how about some clarity about 20% of the site must be open space? Um, I don't look down the road to might come up and say, okay, I'm going to use some of my parking lot for that. Parking can't be. Yeah, we have a footnote in there. Yes. What can okay. what can be um, what meets the, the open space um, requirement is is defined. Okay, I didn't want to make sure that's in there. Driveways right. and parking areas. Now another word on the bottom here: incentive. Right. Political. So the incentive is that um, up to twenty five percent of the improved open space requirement. Can be satisfied by porches and decks if they meet, if they're at least 35 square feet 
area and they project out from the building face. So then I'm going to say these porches would count towards up to 25% of the program. So it incentivizes, it doesn't require it. You're not, you know, there's no, uh, the incentive is that it allows them to be counted towards one of the other requirements. Well, if I get to put on my political hat, sure. and the word incentivize can be used quite broadly, mm -hmm. is there another word? So that term, that term is, is not used in the requirements like in, in, in the, the, the draft. Okay. I'm just describing it as the way that the requirements are drafted. Okay. And I think when the developer comes to the city council and say, here's, right. right. There's no, there's no money changing hands or anything like that. No, it's, it's just, it's a uh, bonus in that if they put those in there, they can count those towards part of, part of the open space requirement. Matt, I ask you a question about well, the, the open space. Is it just open space, or is there any requirements regarding what you put in that? I know you said something about a pool, but yeah, the, the the standards list examples of things that can be um, counted as the improved open space. Uh, the uh, basic standard is that they have to be uh, at a minimum sodded and they uh, and designed for the use of. <coughs> Residents and it includes the different different examples of things that, that can go in, but it doesn't require specific things to go in. So if they have to cut the grass and it's that's considered green space. Um I don't have to put anything out there for the kids or anything like if, that. If it if there are 40 units and above, then they do have to put it in a, a children's play area, which would include some type of equipment or, or some some design some children's something designed specifically for the use of uh, recreational use of children. Okay. Well, that is that when you say that I say playground, what about the kids that say 12 or 14 year old that don't want to use a playground? Do you have anything specific uh, for that? No, we don't have anything specifically written into the uh, regulation stuff. Okay, thanks. But once you get teenage years, uh, you design things for them, they potentially stay away from it. I'm just saying, I'm sure the space that we kick a ball or throw a baseball to each other, that type of space would be good. Right. You're looking for a definition of open space. Yeah, it's in there. Oh, it's in there. Um, Okay, so, so back on the, the stormwater, uh, so it encourages um, incorporating, this is not a great picture, but uh, using swales and uh, other vegetation to uh, within parking areas so that stormwater drains into it and it allows it to um, uh, be absorbed and planting, That's, we don't specifically require this, but uh, certain types of plants will help to cleanse the soil water, so it the water quality. Uh, trying to get away from what you see on the right hand side, which is the minimally designed uh, retention pond that is typically going to be fenced uh, and have something that's more like what you see on the left hand side, where it's at it, it, a minimum it's a visual amenity, uh, but, but that if it's designed uh, appropriately. Uh, that it can also be um, really used by the resident, you know, trail around it, seating, you know, so like you might have a, a, a building adjacent to it. So uh, encouraging that, not requiring, but encouraging that because this, if you we're incentivizing, let's say, if you put this in, it counts towards your open space requirement. If you put this in, it does not. Maybe encouraging. So in terms of waste collection, yes. It's been talking about the parking area. I did have a question about that. Um, and I'm sorry I haven't seen it written here. Okay. Is there a uh, minimum? Okay, we've got 1.5 space for one bedroom unit. Is that pretty standard? I mean, if you have two people that have one bedroom apartment. It is because you'll you'll have a mix of someone bedroom apartments. You'll have one person living there. 
you'll have some that have some people living there, so it averages out. Uh, when you also, but then you, you also take into account that the, the larger bedrooms or the units with more bedrooms are going to require more parking spaces, um, uh, two and three, uh, or for your two and three, two parking spaces for two and three bedroom units, three parking spaces for uh, anything above that. So uh, you do, that is very, um, very consistent with what a lot of cities require. Maybe actually a little bit on the higher end. Uh, and we do also do have a visitor parking requirement, which is not obviously it's not really used 100% like a resident parking is. So that can act as a, a little bit of a um, flex. May I ask, since we're interrupting your presentation, but uh, if there is something in here that the planning commission would like to see different, it's, we can make a motion. And Discussion. Okay. I think that's about a lot of part of as well. Uh, absolutely. Uh, this is your show. <laughs> uh, so, waste collection and uh, service loading areas, the keys there, you know, the, the site has to be designed so that, uh, that those common facilities that residents use are placed in convenient locations for residents, but they're also easily accessible by the Needs to service them, uh, and that waste collection areas are going to need to be screened. What you see on the left hand side is not going to be adequate. What you see on the right hand side is, is a good bit better, uh, having uh, a um, full enclosure around it, uh, and uh, that those have to be closed uh, when they're not in use. Uh, we also have to incorporate some pedestrian standards into the draft uh, so that. Uh, interior walkways are going to be connected to the street. They're going to be connected to any adjacent trails or pathways in the neighborhood, any bike path facilities that might be uh, built by the city, for example. Uh, in the future, um, walkways within the site are going to be separated from any vehicular areas, so you can't just include your driveway and say that's, that's my walkway. Um, but there are cases where uh, through the use of different materials, curbing, bollards, other types of changes in material, you can um, uh, include walkways alongside or kind of immediately adjacent to your driveways. Um, and there also is an exception for smaller parking areas that those you don't have to put walkways uh, adjacent to them if they're designed um, um, as shared spaces. As you'll see in the bottom right, that image with the, the favored parking area, uh, you would not have to put sidewalks adjacent to that. It would just be, uh, I think the, the maximum is 16 parking spaces, uh, so that there's very little traffic going in and out of that part of the complex. Uh, and it would be, uh, and because of the uh, textured driving surface, cars are going to drive slower through there. Um, so that can, that's sort of the exception. The image on the left hand side where the walkway is basically something that's just painted, striped on, would not be the requirement. You have to do something more like what you see on the top right, uh, where there's a change in material or a change in elevation uh, <coughs> in the raised walkway. And we also have uh, recommended some standards to improve privacy and security. Uh, such as the location and screening of stairs if they are not internal stairs. They need to be away from street view. It also helps to keep it from looking more, helps it to look more compatible with the adjacent residential uh, rather than looking 100% like a typical uh, apartment complex. Uh, windows and entrances to ground floor areas need some separation from driveways, parking, and, and walkways. You'll see in this, um, this building, this apartment building, the ground floor units have virtually no separation whatsoever from the parking area. Um, the, the, the windows are right at eye level with um, cars, uh, people coming, getting, getting in and out of their cars. There's no landscape or anything, not much space uh, between them. Uh, and also, of course, you can see those stairs quite easily. Uh, and then these two examples, the, although the picture on the top left is not uh, an 
an apartment complex, uh, one of the ways that the requirements allow you to achieve those privacy and security standards is by um, if the buildings um, are raised above the sidewalk or parking area level, it achieves a, a, a good bit of um, visual privacy for those ground floor units in the sense of separation. Uh, and then on the bottom, bottom right, you'll see uh, incorporating landscaping, having a setback between walkways and the ground floor units will help achieve that standard. Uh, lighting standards, light walkway areas have to be um, lighted. Um, there cannot be spillover on the adjacent property, so any lighting, fix, fix, um, lighting fixtures, whether they're building mounted or they're uh, um, freestanding, have to be shielded. No, no lights taller than 20 feet. Uh, architectural standards, uh, and all of these are really geared towards making uh, multifamily development visually more compatible with single family development, particularly when, when they are uh, next door to one another. So uh, requiring more foresight design, um, which means you know, all, all sides of the building have to be equivalent uh, design. Uh, buildings have to be articulated well, uh, not just plain boxes. I'll explain that in a second. Um, the complexes have to have more than one building type more than one floor plan and just reversing a floor plan does not meet the requirement. Uh, and the roof lines also like the buildings, those have to be articulated as well. So here are two examples of buildings that multifamily buildings that would not be requirements. You have uh, buildings that have no variation along the along the building walls, they're flat. Uh, there are no recesses, there are no changes in materials or colors. Um, so they're very uh, very minimalistic. They're not going to fit well in a residential environment. Uh, compared to these buildings, which uh, have a lot of variation in terms of, so we have building articulation, we have recesses and projections uh, along the along the elevation, along the facade. Um, uh, porches and balconies are sticking out, uh, and, and there are recesses for those uh, for some of those balcony areas. Changes in material, you have changes in color. And then uh, the building, uh, the uh, roof articulation. So, here are some examples of buildings that, although they have some variation in the roofs, uh, the predominant roof feature that you'll see is that long, flat ridge line. Uh, the requirements are going to require that that ridge line be broken up. Uh, that um, and you can do that in a number of ways. That's incorporating cables and formers to help to do that. But the ridge line, uh, there's a, a maximum length at which point they have to vary that ridge line. And in terms of uh, details and materials, there's a requirement that there be a coordinated color scheme. Does it say what that color scheme has to be? Um, that certain um, uh, um, uh, Bright, uh, uh, the, 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 the word is escaping me, not neon, but uh, so very, very bright, gaudy colors cannot be used. That, that uh, all the earth tones are not required, they're, they are recommended in, in, the, in the standards. Um, buildings, when they are facing the street, have to have at least 15% of their, that elevation, has to have uh, some fenestration between the windows and doors. Uh, and that on other facades, it's at least 10%. So uh, if you're not facing the street, uh, then the requirements are a little bit less. Uh, windows have to be, uh, have to have some depth to them. So you can't just have, uh, it can't just be very, very flush. Um, and permitted materials include, you know, there's more to it than this, but generally masonry. So um, uh, decorative concrete block, not plain concrete block. Uh, stucco, wood, wood sided, all those are, are permitted. There are some materials that are restricted in terms of how much of the facades can be, can, can be uh, how much of how much of facades can be these materials such as vinyl and tile siding, and here are the tinted glass. Some of the permitted materials um, were used on on the sides, chain link fencing, plywood uh, cannot be used on building facades, sheet metal, fireplace. 
So here, uh, a, a example of building. Oh, and um, I didn't mention this, but um, one of the requirements is that there must be more than one exterior building material. Uh, so you have to incorporate something more than you can't just do just all the brick. Um, and you can't do just all wood. Uh, so there needs to be some um, inclusion of multiple materials. And typically, uh, you're going to use heavier materials such as brick on the bottom and lighter materials on the top. Um, so here are two examples. You've got a older apartment complex on the, on the bottom right that uses vinyl siding. This uses more vinyl siding than would be allowed. Street facing facade and, and these requirements. I think we put in Scott's at 30 percent. Um, so this is probably over 50 percent. So they, they would have to uh, uh, scale back the amount of vinyl that's used compared to an image like this. And then on the, um, the top left, we've seen a lot in, in, um, in a lot of newer um, multifamily development corporations, different types of metal cladding. Uh, it's almost always corrugated, uh, which gives it kind of that same uh, appearance from the distance as you get with vinyl or wood siding. You get, you get some, some texture to it. Uh, it's very popular um, and ha has been for, for a few years. So we do allow that to be used in the standards, but it is limited. You can't do the entire building. Uh, it's limited to 30% like vinyl siding. Um, there's some landscape standards uh, requiring landscaping around any exposed building foundations on the, on the street facades. Um, encouraged to preserve existing vegetation to uh, extend practical um, using drought tolerant plants and, and low impact design work plots, as I mentioned before. Um, you're required in your landscaping to use a mix of evergreen and deciduous plants. Um, evergreen plants are important to because they provide. Landscape. The purpose, some of the purposes of landscape is such a screening or that visual separation. Uh, if they're deciduous, then in the wintertime you get nothing out of them virtually. Uh, trees along street frontages and uh, irrigation, depending on the landscape design, uh, and an irrigation system may be required. So here's just an example of having that uh, um, landscape along the foundation. Uh, if those are uh, deciduous plants, then in the winter we'll be able to see the, that foundation, uh, what you're wanting to do. Some of the uh, additional standards, or, or two other additional standards that include mirrors that for any developments of over 100 units would require a traffic study automatically, and the city engineer may require certain locations where there, for example, there are some non traffic issues that they could require a traffic study. Uh, even for a development that's under 100 units, and then a stormwater, man a stormwater management drainage plan would need to be included in the site plan that's provided to us. That, that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. We'll take a quick five minute recess or until 556. Uh, 4.56, I think. Quick will bring some and we'll be right back. Or Dr. Summers to ask me anything you've got. And then, John, we've been sitting here an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah. 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 We take a 35 feet out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love yeah, it. Yeah, back. We just left it. Okay. Well, right. well, 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 other things are just other things are way way overboard. Oh no! Oh, yeah. There's nothing will ever be built. No, that, that's true. That's the whole. Is there something? No, I know. Is there something that needs to get talked about? No. no.
Which one was going first? Come on down and if I got my parents or I could write down these questions. Go right ahead. John, we can get to um, a little background information, if I may. Um, when NBAH was making, you know, presented the plans for their apartments, I was totally against it because of the number of units and the traffic situation. And so when BBCD came before you and they presented their plans, and I saw their apartment plans, and it was only going to be like 100. So I wasn't too upset about that. And then, of course, it was then. Um, Changing from the whole R4 to B2, and that you guys quit that, or you guys voted against it. And um, now, you know, it came back that we were going to change R4 from three stories down to two stories. So now we have this. And I just, I don't know about you, but I looked through this several times. And, and as I told somebody, I said, my eyes crossed reading it. I just went, oh my God, where did where did all this come from? And I almost, you know, the idea that we are, you know, this and this and this, has there ever been any development? In fact, is there any in Montgomery or wherever that all of this has been incorporated? And all I can see is the fast cost. And you guys, I'm not against multifamily and the complaint that says, you know, that we need multifamily. My big thing is, Put it in areas where the congestion won't be, where the traffic's not going to be. You know what I'm saying? Like out by the industrial park, areas like that. So have the multifamily. But this to me just seems so not only labor intensive, but cost wise, that I wonder if anybody would be able to come in and even do a development, you know, because of the cost. And I don't know why we're getting so nitty gritty. I mean, this to me is like some, you know, and I, I hate to use the word la da but this would be like some place that, you know, uh, in Atlanta maybe or something like that. But we're here in Prattville, and if we're going to have the multifamily and for a developer to build something like this, incorporating all these, I, you know, it's not going to, and then it, it's not going to serve its purpose because people aren't going to be able to afford to live there. And, and my only thing is, why have we gone to such a degree when it was just going to change from three stories down to two stories, and now we have all this, yes, it's lovely, but I just can't see that happening anymore because of, of you know, the, the populace and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm just very surprised that this has gotten so much detail in why we have to do, and if we're saying this and this and this, that means, you know, the whole development has to incorporate all these. And I don't know if this gentleman can answer that, and I noticed it talked to you, Tim, uh -huh. but it said, where, is, where has all these types of, of details, where are the developments that have every one of these details incorporated? I just, you know, he gave examples of we can't do this. And here's one of this using this, but it didn't say about the lighting, and it didn't say about the parking, and it didn't say about this. And I'm just, I'm completely flabbergasted. Uh, it's the direction that, that we're, I, I, I don't believe we're in, in multi-family dwellings as far as the name and purpose too, and that, that they, that they need to be incorporated. I don't like the looks of the old. Um, so I don't like I don't either at all. We really have to, and again, I don't want to go back. I was just down in Daphne and Fairhope and, and that whole area, and they started a program where they didn't allow a lot of things, and then we're about 20 year fine on that, and we've got to start, in my opinion, we have to start somewhere. And this is a good example of what we can do to say, okay, we're going to have more of our family, but we're going to have a certain set. Now, if we're going to go to this extreme, that's something we might need to look at. But um, we have a lay groundwork for what we will like in our community. Oh, I, 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 I just don't think mm -hmm. that, that, the, that the per capita 
can afford that. Like you talked about Pharaoh and Daphne. I mean, go on, you know, we know about Pharaoh and Daphne. And, and that's why I was saying about the land and things. But for the, the, the per capita income of people, and, and, and I just, you know, I, I just think this is going to knock them out, you know, knock them out of the water. It's not going to happen. And that's that's the only thing we can just I, I'm just forward where you know it started so simple and then all of a sudden now it's just you know it's just blossomed. So that, that's kind of well, Mark, if, if I might, you know, I think a couple of things that sort of have been driving this a lot of the business sort of fully planned, but just for I guess one example of my thought process, the apartment there over there on sixth street. Um, I know. Um, on 6th Street, and you turn off the 31, they go over on 6th Street from 31, sneaking beats. Not that one. Not that one. The one right across. Just yeah, but that 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 is that? Uh, yeah. By the way, but, you know, one thing a lot of people don't realize is the part of this right there, that's actually on the city right away. And so that's one of the things we need to be you know, correcting. Uh, some of the parking on the one that did burn is on the city right of way. So we need to get everybody on the same level paid to make sure because where exactly is that going to start and end? Because if we go and have a parking requirement, it needs to be on their property. This is a private property. Uh, and, and that's, what was, that's what I was saying about the BBCD, the, the plan that I saw that they didn't put out. I mean, that was all incorporated and it was on their property. And of course, they had the one thing where. It's behind you know behind the apartment complexes, but that's also going to take a lot of land, it seems like to me. You know, well, now, one of the things that is already in here too is piggybacking off those of the soil water requirements. Now that was a unfunded federal mandate uh, that city travel had to be put under, and so we <coughs> under that that's why some important that was incorporated because of what the city travel put on the top is a unfunded federal mandate. But is, is there any developments that have incorporated all of this? I'll ask this. Yes, um, there, there are uh, several developments in this. I'm, I'm referring to so they're going to be. Will you come up with a microphone, please? <laughs> no, I, I can't say that 100% these developments that I've seen in the Birmingham area meet all of these requirements, but, but just from uh, visually. Uh, looking at them, there are many that do meet. Of those that have been developed in the last 10 or 15 years, meet the majority of these requirements. Uh, only a few of these requirements are going to truly impact the cost, and that's probably going to be in the architecture, the architectural standards requiring um, the, the building articulation, but most contemporary apartment developments already do that. Uh, they, uh, so this is just preventing those where they're trying to get, you know, uh, reduce their costs down to the bare minimum and doing just substandard multifamily development. Uh, most contemporary multifamily development includes a lot of those architectural standards. Maybe not 100% of them do. Uh, they're going to be very different. There are going to be big variations between things that you see in, in, a, in a downtown environment versus a suburban environment. But in terms of the suburban multifamily development, you start you are going to see most of the architectural standards that are in this are being met in contemporary suburban uh, apartment development. So is that including the green space? And when you say architectural, to me that's the building yeah. itself. Is that the green spaces? Is that the parking? Is that the you know, all of everything that you've brought up. Not a hundred percent. Some of those are going to be uh, the open space. You'll see that in those, uh, you'll see the open space provided to about that same extent in uh, those contemporary developments. However, some of it or, or uh, some of those um, developments, the open space is just open space. It's yard area, it's you know, setbacks, it's not um, it's not designed specifically for any particular use. So the residents of those developments don't actually have any recreational space on those. 
Some of them do, some of them don't, but they meet the open space requirement. There'll be a little extra cost in actually improving it for it to be used for pickleball or 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 what whatever what have you, putting the gazebo in. Uh, but you know, plenty of these plenty of these developments, not just contemporary ones, but for many years, incorporate amenities, clubhouses and pools and, and things of that nature. Um, and those were acceptable to you know, meet. These requirements. So that's not I didn't say that that's a, a, an added cost compared to what you see traditionally in most um, mid range to above multi family development. You're not going to see it at the very low end. My main thing is I just think that we're, we're, we're wanting castles for, for maybe a bigger. I, I, just, I just think it's going. Completely overboard for being able to get multifamily and allowing, um, you know, allowing all well, per capita people to right. use. Well, and that's all. That's we're like, going in the direction of the end. I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. Yes, I agree, but I just don't think it, it, it fits. You know, that, yeah. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. So, Dr. Jerry Simmons, 141 North Chestnut Street. Um, disclaimer I'm out of the rental business. I don't operate any more rentals. And no desire. I won't be buying apartments. Um, so, I'm just a citizen in a single family home looking at this rationally. And as my eyes glazed over, as we went from a change last month to a drawn to change the height, which of course you can't do for the mill, and I'll explain that in a minute. Um, we went to nine pages. It became apparent to me that basically what we've got is a boilerplate taken from KPS files, and some of it fits Prattville, and some of it fits about as well as a sock on a rooster. So you're being fed all of this information. The standards are embedded with overly minute details. Many of them are not even exclusive to R4. So why put this in an R4 ordinance? You're going to have to repeat it for other districts. They should be incorporated. I think it's unfair to give you just R4 and say, I want your vote on just R4. You need to be looking comprehensively at all of the plans for all of the amendments for all of the districts. If you only look at R4, you might not realize that multifamily doesn't just apply to R4, it applies to RD1 and T2 mobile homes. So you might not even be aware of that if you didn't look comprehensively. So I urge you to look at all of it. The reason you want to look at it comprehensively, you want to make sure that the change is mesh and are congruent, and you pick up any conflicts that may be between the districts. The reason, by the way, that you're being fed R4 our, our first was that there's a moratorium. Well, the moratorium ends on April 30th, unless it's extended. There's no hurry. Because, as I'll explain, based on the Supreme Court decisions, giving the middle downtown a permit does not grandfather them. So, according to the Supreme Court, numerous decisions I've given Mr. Stevens, some of the Attorney General opinions, you do not get grandfathered unless you constructed the apartments. You can't construct the downtown apartments until FEMA approves the levy. So there's no urgency. The city council should not codify this set of requirements because the mill could never meet these requirements. So I, I for that reason, some of the uh, standards, by the way, um, are, and by the way, if you want any of the court decisions or the AG opinions, let me know, I'll send them to you. Some of them I find arbitrary, capricious, and unreasonable. They have to have a reasonable relationship to safety, health, and welfare of the public. If you can't prove that, the judge is likely to say, how? So I'll give you some examples. 
minimum pitch, five to 12, 40 foot maximum roof length, wall articulated and fenestrated to provide physical in interest to who? More than one material on the subject. No parking between the building and the street. No building can be surrounded by parking. You see, some of these things may be possible if you lived in a historic district that already had established guidelines, but this isn't going to fly for a city public wide. The other things don't make sense, as Councilman Chambers picked up. I wouldn't want to be the one telling my spouse that I know we live in a one bedroom, but you can only park half your car. Um, the other one that I, I chopped that in one visitor spot for four, four units. I can see a real mess there and folks parking in everybody else's spots and or out on the street, whatever. So there's some things that clean up. And there's some things that are just totally unreasonable. 282 feet of storage per unit, a child's playground, if there's 40 units and it must be 2,000 square feet, there's a liability I think some owners of apartments would love to take on. A traffic study for 100 units, I, I, I really got a chuckle because we stood here as citizens as a, a, a complexes of 200 to 300 subdivisions. And we begged for traffic studies only to fall on deaf ears but now we're gonna go ahead and do one for a hundred units. And I'm not objecting to it. All I'm saying is I wanna see this thing done comprehensively. And if they're required to have a traffic study, I want a McLean Smith subdivision to have that same traffic study. The comp plan, let's, let, let me read just a bit about what it says. It says that given the findings, the community will deal with continued significant pressure to accommodate multifamily development. As explained in the study, this is due to a large number of households and a type of income level that tends for rental housing, including young singles, childless couples, widowers, retirees, and military. So they're telling you that there's a demand. When I look at this, and by the way, I like apartments that look aesthetic. I want them to be well built. So it's not that I disagree. I think there should be a reasonable proportion of multifamily as compared to single family. And part of that is that's what's driving all, all of this. So I want that too. But I perceive a clear message, a subtle message in this detailed set of plans if you pass this or recommend this. And the message is, if you want to come build apartments, you may find it's not cost effective to build here in practical. That's the subtle message if you were to pass what you've got in front of you. So I request that you table any action, that you wait for the reasons I've given. I suggest that you take time and look comprehensively at all of the changes that Mr. Stevens is going to present from the city so you can make sure that they're fair and that they're reasonable and that they're com compatible. And then the final reason I think that you can table all of this is I'm, maybe I missed it. I could not find any published uh, uh, newspaper in the local newspaper about this hearing um, for today's meeting, which is required, you know, under state law. So um, yeah, maybe, uh, Maybe there's some paper that I missed, but I've checked the progress and I've checked the advertising. And it isn't in of them for any of those days. So I know I covered a lot, and I'm not saying I disagree with a bunch, and I'm not disagreeing that we need to move in this direction. I just think that this plan is a bit much for grab bill, and it's basically going to render cost prohibitiveness. Like the very thing that your plan said, you have an increase in the rent for apartments. And so you need to react to that. that that's, that's my point. 
afternoon I, I won't take very long um i know it's been a long meeting you guys have been there for a good amount of time um i echo the comments uh that have been made you know about uh how, how great these these images look and the the desire to build high quality products um is fantastic you know and i think i look back at some of our renderings we've we put forth um i, I think architecturally um we're going to meet most of them you know i, I think our intent and the beauty of a capital uh, capitalistic uh, approach like this is we're going to build something that we want uh, tenants to want to be a part of, right? We, we want to draw, attract tenants. And I think uh, the, the next generation of, of renters and people that have this type of need value these same things that are part of this plan. So I, I don't disagree with, with the direction of what's trying to be accomplished. Uh, I do know for a fact uh, this would increase costs uh, substantially. Um, and the only way to offset some of those costs is through rents. And so if, if we're looking at this and the developer that we're working with uh, to sell this to looks at this and has to modify the cost accordingly, rents are going to have to increase. Uh, can Prattville support those higher rents? Uh, would we have a situation where we have a half occupied space on our hands and, and, and all the problems that that would um, create? You know, I, I think those are all things to consider, um, but you know, architecturally, you know, different, uh, finishes all those things are great uh, and, and i think they're in line with the renderings that we've submitted with other projects that our developer has done and i think you can deliver a high quality uh, sought after product without this extent uh of requirements as as dr simis uh, alluded to but i, I echo those those comments and uh, appreciate your time is there any other comments question then uh I'm beginning to close. Would you mind reading in the resolution? It's um, right there. Resolution section in it. All that. Um, resolution. <coughs> resolution section in it. All that. Developments. Private zoning ordinance. Whereas private planning commission may formulate and recommend changes to the zoning ordinance of private level out. Whereas the planning commission has determined that the multi island development re regulation should be revised and updated. And whereas the planning commission has formulated an amendment to the zoning ordinance and whereas a public hearing on a proposed amendment to the zoning ordinance was properly advertised and conducted by the private planning commission on March 18, 2021. Now, therefore, be resolved. That the City of Prattle Planning Commission hereby recommends that the Prattle City Council amend the zoning ordinance, Article 6, Section 67, as detailed in Attachment A. Be the further resolve that the, this resolution upon its adoption be uh, transmitted by the Secretary of the Planning Commission to the Prattle City Council. Approved this day, 18 day, March 21. So moved, Mr. Chair. Mr. Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion number one be advertised as conducted by the planning commission. I guess that's 15 or 16. Uh, Scott, was it advertised? Uh, I was just checking the ad we sent to the property for the advertising command. It was sent on 3 3 to run on 3 6. I don't have the newspaper in front of me. Yeah, we got a proof back from them, but like I said, I don't have the paper. Okay. 
Do you have the paper? Where I have the paper in front of me, including the second one and the advertisers. And uh, unfortunately, it didn't run. Okay. So it did not run. What is the legal position on that, Mr. Scott? Uh, I, I would have to go check that. Of course, um, you can. I would say go ahead and go discuss what you want to do today. We can. You can take action if it was not advertised. We can put on the next agenda. Or if, if you feel more comfortable posting it to the next agenda, we can. I think that's right. Okay. 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 That's yeah, absolutely. Good. If you need to be on top of that, that's why I was just going to be honest with the, uh, like we do every, every other advertisement, we send to their, their legal ad department, they send a proof back. So we've got on that. And um, so it's not strong paper in front of them. Again, I know that's a long haul. I'm really glad that we have to do it to go and throw the paper away when we get started to the yard. Different medias, but all right, well, let's discuss it. Um, we will go to later. Uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, uh, uh Scott. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm just curious, uh, do you happen to have the pictures from the 2040 plan that show what, what everybody <laughs> that, that participated said visually? What they liked versus what they say they disliked. And my next question would be are we following along in, in, in that pattern with, with this, this new plan? Yes, sir. Let me give you just a moment to, to get the uh, Discord working. Uh, Uh, there, there are the uh, I mean, maybe you should tell Jason to explain those, but they, these are the uh, pictures I'm showing here in the uh, last week's. Um, and those are all considered departments. No, 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 those are not all considered departments. Okay. So the ones on the left are, are multifamily or extension of the town, and then the top of the right are multifamily. Some of the others are just showing like low riding trees and sidewalks and, and grass. Okay. And, so, how does that, I mean, are we kind of working toward that as far as what we want, as far as the future? Multi-family you know, uh, buildings, because that looks a little different than what I'm reading in some of this. So that's kind of why I was kind of curious where we're going in that regard. Well, I, I, I think the proposed guidelines you can probably you know, not do a site plan review, but probably very similar. Now the guidelines allow a lot of flexibility and, and creativity from the from the design. Do you have the one that was at this line? Because <clears throat> the one I see that says this one looks a little bit more like what right there in the middle of the bottom. That's kind of what it sounds like we're trying to do right now. Well, that you can correct me on that. That's kind of where I'm, yeah. I'm not. The people spoke and they're saying they don't really care for that, that style of that look versus what we had, you know, where they should, that first picture. Those, those look totally different. Maybe. Maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but should we want, should we not want those, uh, that, you know, that type of building, what everybody's requesting, should we not have that moving forward? Uh, well, that one does have any landscaping along the foundation. Uh, it's hard to tell how the, I mean, the parking lot's right in front of the building. I don't, it, I don't know how that's oriented to the rest of the lot. Uh, the roof line may or may not meet the uh, articulation. Requirements. The, the windows don't seem to be inset or, or outset heating. So, um, well, one of the things I see is the, the many stories there are. 
No, yes, sir. And, and that's that that's certainly up for discussion. That currently is not being proposed to change, but that, that's certainly something the planning commission can, can recommend or, or tell me to change. We we just left that how it was. The um, let all the one building the two new homeowners only 10 percent of the students. Well, um, Dr. Simmons also mentioned arbitrary. Pieces. Yes, thank you. Uh, I don't know. I know what we're going to do, and I get what we're going to do, but uh, can we? Yeah, architecturally, with the design standards or using designing zoning horses throughout the state and throughout the country, right. I, I think it's in. Requiring certain looks and, and materials and design a, a very common standard. I mean, throughout the state and throughout the nation. And just, and, and often on other communities, that when you come into it, and I know some areas in Auburn go to like a, a change some of the direction they're going, uh, and you build apartments, would, would that be a major constraint? I don't know. I mean, I look at the whole office complex of that room, and all I see is parking lot. Now, if there were regulations that would have been different at the time of the 80s, you know, we would have built that building differently. And we would, you know, I think we would have just had to build what we what was, what we could. And we would have done it the way we did. Um, if we do need to think about this and look at it and make sure that we are correct on the advertising of this, um, do we need to hold this for the next meeting and continue discussing? Yeah, I'm comfortable about that. Although I would encourage you to, to further discussion. So if we need to make changes, we'll get it done. So. Um, if legally, I know it's restraints on the people that might come in here, but there's some common sense thing. I don't know if somebody's going to build, a, uh, build an apartment complex with what T11, and, uh, but it could happen. Uh, and we're saying, okay, you can't use T11 on the, the, the boards. I don't think that's too much of a restraint because they're not talking about other people. And you can't also say, and I don't know how often they use the, the metal on the back, that it all, the, everything has to look the same. Um, maybe that's not that much of a restraint on that part. Um, the other part being that the parking lot, I would like to, and again, borrow in other communities. You wouldn't even know that if you drive down some areas in other communities, you wouldn't even know Walmart was there instead of like our Walmart Street. Whereas you know it's there, you have to really have to, you know, it's hidden behind the, the bushes and it looks good and you get there and they build it and it's thriving and they're, they're, the business is doing great. Um, but you don't, know, it just doesn't you know, come out and jump back when you drive them up. And I think having certain standards you have to meet, and everybody wants to improve their standards. That's what we all want to do in anything. Um, but you know, like some of the things you mentioned, like the dumpster parking and the lighting, you know, that's just kind of common sense mm -hmm. what people would have. And I also noticed in the 2040 plan, you know, you said there's all different kinds of people that live in apartments. You know, there's older people, younger people, people without children, people with children. You want to have a diverse enough apartment mix that you attract those people, you know, that aren't just 
newly into their own housing, which is what used to be typical apartment dwellers. They're not anymore. And they expect more. And I think having standards like this, they're obviously built other places. We've seen them, we saw the pictures. Somebody gets this. By the yeah. way. And, and, and I would get those in spaces where they put basketball on the board. Grandma's out there playing basketball at 2 o'clock in the morning to wake up and up. You know, who's going to regulate that? And, and we have, I understand we want to have recreational areas, but I'm not positive that, yeah, we need to have green spaces and open spaces, but to say, um, you know, so come in here with 38 units instead of 40, so they don't have to. Playground in and then playgrounds, somebody gets hurt. Well, we want to put one in and let the city that requires, and it would be liable for something because they want to have one in. I don't know. Yes, sir. And if I might, well, if somebody is waking up grandma at 2 a.m., the city can't come and <laughs> take the action there. Now, one of the things, piggybacking off of that, but one of the things that I see on here that I'm not crazy about is uh, page five, uh, about half of the I'm sorry, take three. Page three, about halfway down to E, letter E. Uh, folks who recreate may not be kept on the premises. I'm having a struggle with that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm very much accepting. I think it's a part of our responsibility to validate the planning commission and everything to help with the quality of life, which that uh, outdoors affects both mental and physical health. And that's probably a part of our, our charge is to watch out for the mental and physical health of our, our, our citizens. But that, that one, uh, somewhere down the line, whether it's today or later on, I'm probably going to make a motion that we remove that. Uh, the parking. Uh, I'm not crazy about all of the parking. Uh, sometimes the spirit of compromise, you have to try to do something. Slide under page two, um, parking driveways. Uh, uh, I, 1.5 spaces per one bedroom unit. You know, I, I can almost go there. But then if you move down two spaces per unit of two and three bedrooms, in my mind, I, it'll be two spaces per unit of, of two bedrooms. The next one, if there's three spaces uh, for for three bedrooms, I can I, I would like to see us have some discussions on that. And uh, it does sound like because of the potential of it not being properly advertised, that we do need to, to hold this. But the other question I have on top of that, with the timeline, with the moratorium, and everything else, that we need to send a message to the city council. And say, hey, the mission needs more time. Yeah. Uh, just a few of the things I'm going to bring up. But there are a lot of other things that do, that do put up the cost of uh, building. Uh, life safety is so, so important. But the, the fire law uh, of the apartments that were on 6th Street recently, uh, two different age groups uh, of apartments there, uh, one didn't have a fire law. The other one did, and help me out, Chief. Pretty much that firewall uh, did come into a big play in that that firm. But then I think new ones now have to have sprinklers. Uh, I'm not a big sprinkler guy, but I believe that the ones that did burn, they had to sprinkle. And I got it without any putting much risk. There's been a lot less damage. So there's a lot of things brought up through the years, probably because of situations happen. That need to be incorporated in here. And I mentioned earlier, there's some parking uh, that were that was allowed from one of the more than one uh, parking section for them to, to utilize that as a parking requirement. I think that's really wrong. So there are a lot of things, but uh, I, I do appreciate it being brought to our attention about the advertisement. I don't think what we're doing is egregious and, and, and arbitrary, but uh, I do think we need to look at it closer. But I do think we need to send a message to the council as well. I uh, would we entertain another little sit down and 
have a strive to the late session on the uh oh absolutely no, I said now Kirk any other any feedback comments I can get today is very helpful to so uh, incorporating the other changes of the plan which you may be telling us I will take this up and just post this copy and this uh, and I will say from there on the part of the even if it were recommended today uh my planning commission more of them would need to be extended so that and was already in the works. Mr. Mayor, this will find the part of the votes. I, I personally think you know I, I places down there, Gulf Shores and not those and who say we can't have a vote at the beach just I, that's blew my mind. Like, okay. Well I, I don't think I'm not coming here but I have to try to uh, enforce that. But I think mean, that's more of an individual apartment complex in itself we don't think the, uh, i'm not going to manage the apartment complexes uh, and i'm afraid that's what we're doing with some of these studies is we're not going to manage the campaign um well, but if i might ask that what I would say is, is that should we ask a little guy from the council uh dr Sue has brought up about looking at everything collectively mm -hmm. do we want to find out from the council they want us to look at this individually like this and, and then collectively before we send them something i think i'd like to get a little bit of guidance from that to, i think it, i can ask through the mayor's report but i think it'd be a lot better for it to be coming from the planning commission yes sir and of course the the entire zoning works is being looked at uh, this was moved to the forefront because of the moratorium um, it started in December and it's currently running through the 30th and we still want to extend that any longer than necessary. So this one no longer. Uh, again, the, the plan the entire time has been to update the entire zone. It's in, and it's underway. The discussion started on uh, many other sections. Again, the, the reason this was coming up to the planning commission early is because of the more And for the sake of time, if we are going to do this, and that's just out of time, but then
to the ball. We might want uh, it to be developed on a, um, an attractive, uh, economical way. You know, fill, fill a need. Yes, sir. For something with a work session, can you get uh, an average number of apartments that are currently in Prattville? What the average occupancy, what the average rent, you know, do we have, what do we have in the way of low income apartments? I want numbers to see where we are. Yeah. What's that the cost per unit right now with just building apartments? Is that just a regular apartment? Perhaps they could. I, I haven't built apartments in a while, so I don't have those. Yeah, one day, what, if we, if we, if we, if we would we say it's $100,000 to build one unit? Yeah. But, but, but should that unit be a true part of the next question? Just that, I was asking the question, no, I just want to know. But, but should it be a part of the question? I mean, we will say, okay, um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking really at the, uh, at the number of apartments costs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they come back and oh, if we go up on this, it's going to cost an extra $50 yeah. because of the extra apartment. We're asking the developers, the homes of subdivisions, give us more green space, give us this, you know, and, and you know, and I have heard a lot. And um, I guess one other mm -hmm. talking point at one point in time here, right when you build a subdivision, mm -hmm. you build a subdivision, you have to have sidewalks on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, then all of a sudden, the developers go, oh, no, we. we that's too expensive. We're not going to. So now we don't have sidewalks on one side. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people started building outside the corporate landings or in another community somewhere that don't have to build sidewalks or they don't have the curbs. And, and then we have a lot of people move over here because they like the curbs and the sidewalks and those mm -hmm. identities that, you know, so I mean, we're, I, I don't know when you're putting a sticker price on the building. <laughs> yeah, the fire safety. Uh, if I had not talked to the fire department at all, but I think if you were to go in and really look at when you're building these apartments, the fire safety side of it, that's going to run up the cost of the product a lot more than the two or three different groups of something. Uh, no, but not my opinion. But again, the fire safety has proven itself to me. So I mean, uh, the stormwater, where we had no control over that, that's an unfunded mandate. And you've got to have those, and that is going to cost up. I'll give you one quick example on the International Building Code. There was a entity that was looking at two different locations, one here in Rapple, one in Montgomery. They loved the location over here better. They had already gone over and talked to the uh, Montgomery area for one. They saw this one, they came back. Well, in between there, both entities of uh, Montgomery Travel adopted the, the next round of International Building Codes. And when they saw ours, they said, oh, that's going to cost us, that we have cheap, if you know what I'm talking about, that mission in name, I think it's over $300,000 additional in cost. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you know, we're going to go back to Montgomery. They went back to Montgomery, they found out that they had passed the same thing. And even though they had gone to them before, they said, well, you didn't fill out, you're not grandfather did. So then they came back to us, and that has nothing to do with President Hill's commercial field. It's got to do with, uh, Residential, uh, whether it's uh, apartments or not. Now, the other thing I'm hearing from a lot of builders is that uh, I think it's very important. They have to cut, uh, uh, have to block out all the passages and the achievement. They do the vacuum test or whatever. Um, That's building code. Building code, yeah. They have to do a vacuum test. To make sure there's any additional air leaks in there. GDF efficient code, and that's throughout the state. Okay. Well, a lot of folks don't lie here. A lot of complaints from builders on that. But look at the, the uh, utility bills, how they have come down. So there's a lot of things that have gone, got through the prices up. But I, I don't think that we need to be looking at the price of a unit when we start making these decisions. Yeah. 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 I'm just curious with what folks don't know that. Um, I want to make a motion to, to hold this to the next meeting. Is there a corner table? Oh, I just, 